You said you started smoking again when it gets really stressful for you. Like, I mean, anybody can understand that during a divorce, you're stressed out, so you lean on the cigarettes again. When do you start realizing that, okay, this isn't about stress anymore. This is just about me digging smoking cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think probably almost right away because it just becomes it just becomes a habit after that. And then you sort of connect it to all these different things in your life. You know, you connect it to, I know people connect it to driving or you connect it to having a cup of coffee or you connect it when you're having your glass of wine at night or, you know, after a meal, there's all kinds of different things that it sort of like attaches it, the habit attaches itself to. And then I think it, that's how it kind of starts. And then once it gets in your system, I mean, then you it's, enjoy it. it's a drug and it's hard to get off of. It's right. painful. Totally. So what have you tried to get off of it besides going cold turkey? Um, let's see. The first time I tried some um, Wella Beatrin, this is probably, uh, what, maybe four or five years ago. I took it for two weeks and it just, I, I didn't really like it. And it's not even supposed to work for two weeks. So then I quit without it. Um, but I remember looking at a bunch of different websites and reading a couple different books at the time, which definitely helped because I was like, you know, focused and like on the mission. Mm -hmm. And now it's just, if you were going to do it, you're planning on going cold turkey. I mean, people have suggested all kinds of different things to me, like that Chantix stuff, but then I've heard about really bad side effects from that stuff. What is that, a drug? Mm hmm It's a prescription medication. And then... What are the side effects? I've heard that you can get really depressed. For how long? I don't know. Suicide. Really? Yeah, there have been cases of suicide. There have been a lot of lawsuits just in the first quarter of 2008 alone. Of course, it's something that I follow a lot. I don't know if uh, people know who, who I am yeah, talking about. Yeah, let me introduce you. I would like to introduce you to Jesus. Well, it's actually, yeah, actually God voice. is like now Janice Tom. <laughs> yes, it is a drug. <laughs> this is a Sean Wheeler, and he is from purehypnosis.com. And we brought him in today to um, try to work his magic here on Jen Hobby. And I'm assuming a whole bunch of people come to you throughout the year and they're like, That's, I've tried yeah. everything else. Yeah, exactly. I'm the last thing that they try because everyone thinks that they're going to get hypnotized to bark like a dog and quack like a duck. <laughs> and they don't know if people like me are charlatans or just taking advantage of them. So there's a lot of skepticism and a lot of fear. Right. So usually after they try all the other stuff, they come to me and they're like, I've tried everything. And I'm going to give hypnosis a shot. What's your success rate? Uh, you know, I don't have exact percentages, but it's high, meaning that, um, like she said, the person has to really want to quit. And I can't come in and hypnotize somebody who has no desire to quit and make them do anything. Mm -hmm. But if they have a strong desire, it's something that can help them make it easier, meaning the thing she's talking about, like the uh, being in the car and having a cup of coffee and when you get stressed out, all those associations make it really difficult to quit because you're having to battle with these thoughts all day long. Right. So what the hypnosis can do, if the hypnotist knows what they're doing, is you can make it to where those thoughts don't come as often, meaning the person can forget about it most of the time, and that when they do think about it, you're thinking about it in the way that you did four years ago, or when you quit, right. which is that you're thinking about it in a way that makes it unappealing to you. That's right. what we do. So um, how long does the actual hypnosis take? Well, it takes, you know, the session takes about an hour and a half the first time I work with somebody, uh, and the actual hypnosis may take 30 to 45 minutes of that. And then what, what will she feel? Just n no desire for smoking? You know, there's a range. And I want your listeners to know, to be honest, like people respond differently. Like I've had clients who smoke for 30 years, pack and a half a day, who Whoa. quit and had no cravings <laughs> and had no withdrawal. Wow. And they've, I've done interviews with them. They're on my website. And so the thing is, is that some people, after being hypnotized, will experience an improvement but it's not like magic like for those others. Right. So everyone responds differently, but if the person has a sincere desire, it's something that will help just about everyone. Now, humans are pack animals, and we have our friends, and a lot of times smokers are friends with smokers. Right. And sometimes, you know, people who didn't smoke smoked again because they're around friends that right. smoke. So if somebody's trying to quit smoking, but everybody around them is still a smoker, is it more doesn't matter. doesn't matter. I actually just got an email yesterday from a woman that I hypnotized this summer to quit. Mm -hmm. And what she said in the email was two weeks after her session with me, she was at her high school reunion. And at the high school reunion, all of her smoker friends were there. And she was really worried about it beforehand. Mm -hmm. She was thinking, am I going to be able to not smoke around all these mm -hmm. people? And she was so surprised that when she got there, she didn't have to fight it. She didn't have to resist it. She was happy.
hanging out outside with them while they were smoking, wow. and she had no desire huh. to do it. And that's not an exception. That's common. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, when, and when, I, when I do the session with people, what we do is we actually integrate those worries and concerns, whether it's having a few drinks and losing your inhibitions, whether it's having a stressful Jen thing coming Jen's up. She's really bad about losing her inhibitions. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you're going to be in there all day. <laughs> Many people do. And, they, and once, so once we talk about these things and you address them, because it's not just like you hypnotize someone and you say cigarettes are going to taste bad. And, you know, you send them out, which is what I think a lot of people think hypnosis is. What it really is is an understanding of what your concerns are and what's important to you. Mm-hmm. And when you're hypnotized, you're hearing those things in a way that sticks, in a way that resonates. And so you don't forget about it later on. Hmm. Now, do you need some kind of like practicing license to do this? No, you know, strangely, and I I wish it were regulated, but being certified as a hypnotherapist or as a hypnotist is very easy. It's not regulated by the state. You know, there there is no licensure in the same way that someone would be a counselor or a or a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Not at all. Um, but there is a way if you're looking for a hypnotherapist to find out whether or not they've been appropriately trained to see how much time they put into it, where they studied, and also to talk about their experience. So, you know, as a consumer, you have to be very um, you have to be careful and you have to do your research to find somebody who's good. Um, but if you do that, then chances are the person's going to be able to help you. Can you give us just a little sample? Like, obviously, we can't do the whole session here on right. radio. It's going to take much longer than that. It would bore that. everyone to death, and people would crash into each other on 400. So <laughs> <laughs> but I'd sure like to like hear what the first minute or two sounds like. Like, if you and Jen were alone in a room together, and you right. were actually, we weren't here, right. and it's just you and Jen, how does it all go down? Well, the thing I do first, actually, before we even do any hypnosis, and we talk for about you know, 30, 45 minutes or an hour, we just chat, like really in a normal conversation. But before we do any hypnosis, what I do with people is a little exercise that actually involves helping them to think about how they'd see themselves as a person once the smoking habit was no longer a problem for them, and really clarifying that through visualization. And once they have that clear picture of what that is, we actually connect it, tie it directly to the stimulus, meaning the craving thought, so that every time they actually have a craving, every time they think about a cigarette, they're aware of why they want to quit. And when you're thinking about That's it in cool. that way, you don't want to smoke. So we do that before we even do any hypnosis. Now, the actual hypnosis, well, I can, I can slow my voice down. You know, and talk to her in a way that would help her to relax. But chances are that's going to make people on the freeway kind of drift mm-hmm. over, you know, and, and, and become a little bit too relaxed. So, um, but what it typically is, is you don't have a stopwatch or anything like that. All I do is I say, close your eyes. And once I have them close their eyes, I have them focus on their breathing. And then I start to talk in a way that distracts them. Mm-hmm. Meaning, uh, I talk about things that are happening around the room. I talk about things they might be thinking about. um, Have them become aware of their body for a few moments. And then once you get them nice and distracted and relaxed, well, then, you know, there's some visualization that takes place. And then once the person is, in my judgment, is to the point where they need to be, that's when I start feeding you all the suggestions about the things that are important to you. That's when I start giving you the the suggestions about how it's going to be, what you want to do. And in that state of mind, when you're relaxing in that way, like I said, the stuff really sticks in a way that it doesn't. When you're just having a conscious conversation. Is that when you can put this stuff in there about clucking like a chicken? Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) I've been hypnotized in one of those comedy shows before. And if you haven't been hypnotized, what happened to me was I was always in control of what I was doing. But when... Whatever he was asking me to do just felt like the most fun thing in the world. So exactly. I, I wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But I, but I didn't have to. Like, I knew I was in control to not cluck like a chicken or talk like, you know. The way I describe it when I do those shows, because I do those shows too, and I volunteered in them and I've done them as a hypnotist, is I say, you know, you know exactly what you're doing. You just don't care. Right. Meaning you don't have the <laughs> self-conscious awareness of like, oh, this person's judging me and that person thinks I look stupid. That's gone. And it's the coolest thing in the world because the people who are in the audience who are too chicken to get up there on stage, they don't know that the people on stage are having more fun than anyone else in the room. Right. They think that they're being controlled <laughs> and manipulated, but when you're hypnotized in that show, you feel awesome and you're having a blast. And you're loving it and you know exactly what you're that doing. That sounds cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it yeah. is. Cool. Be hypnotized all the time. When, when I first saw it in when college, wants to get I, hypnotized before she goes out on the weekends. <laughs> I thought it was scary. Like when I first saw a show in college, when I was in college all those years ago, I didn't volunteer. I was like, I'm not going to be looking like a fool up there on stage. But later on, when I learned how to do this, and then I went to a show and I tried it, it's like, man, that's a piece of cake, and it's fun. And I, every time I go to a hypnotist show now, I went to one like a month or two ago at the Punchline. I jump up on stage and volunteer, and it's a party. It's it a is. party. It's a total good time. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna go trial by fire here. We'll set up an appointment with. Jen and you, 
Cool. If she's okay with it. <laughs> That's the most important thing. The yeah. first thing we need to do is hypnotize her to say yes to all of this. <laughs> and once she says yes, then she'll do a whole session with you, and then people can follow along and see if it works for her. Perfect. Sounds good. But if it doesn't, we'll be totally honest with them also. Absolutely. Okay. And we'll have a link on over to Sean Wheeler, too. It's purehypnosis.com. That's right. And hypnosisfundraisers.com. Great. And today's Great American Smokeout, right? Yeah. Yes. I think people are trying at least for a day uh-huh. to see what it's all about. That's right. Thanks for coming in, Sean. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. It, Appreciate it being here. Entertainment Buzz is coming up next.